Hi, this is Bobby Klein. I'm the translator and the interpreter of the I Ching. This is a new earth I Ching, easy to understand, easy to put to use. It's an oracle, 3,000 years of wisdom wrapped up in this. So sit back, take a breath. If you've got a question in your mind, ask it. If not, just hang in and you'll get some answers. And that's what this is all about. The I Ching, they say, is the book of change, and it is, but it's also the book of answers. All right. Tune in. Drop in. You're home. Yeah. You're home. Waiting for the wind. My path is held in irons. Soon my sails will be full. My soul family is uh, getting ready to sail out of uh, Holland. You know, and Kata and their basketball team of girls. I'm dedicating this uh, reading to my family friends. Y'all sail. The wind is a blessed friend. And we go to the oracle this week for the advice for these coming days to make us aware and keep us awake. Pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, man. The method I use is uh, the old method of the coins. Three coins of the same, and uh, they have a yin side and a yang side. And you throw them six times and build your qua, build your hexagram. And then the divine takes over, spins the coins, and you're ready to go in this week. It's number 23, called Po. Splitting apart. The energy above is the mountain, the energy below is the earth. The earth by her contractions and expansions, creates mountains. In this hexagram, the young earth is pushing upward, causing the yin mountain to rise. This is an act of creation. For this process, this is creation taking place. For that which lies so quietly, peacefully in the earth is coming to a change. There's gotta be a mountain that's gonna push upwards. And man, there's nothing to do but accept this process and keep still, you know. And that's how it is, you know. We can be very peaceful, but, you know, always be ready. Always be ready for the earth to part and to create a great mountain. And that mountain is you, and that mountain is your love, and that mountain is your spirit, and it comes. These are the laws of nature taking place. Observe. Right now, the earth is shifting below your feet or the water is flowing beneath the hull. So watch it. Stay balanced. You know, that feeling you get on a surfboard that you are in balance but out of balance. Below you is the power and you stay steady to ride it. And the earth is like that. It's like we're riding the waves, right? And the, and the board is our, is our earth. So we're always riding and we're always getting ready, see. And listen, there's a, you know, when something like this comes up, you know, do I call it a warning? 
what do we call it? A warning, we call it a, a message. But here it is, and I think it's important to hear telling that there's been something that you've built, something you've cherished, and you're looking at it and it seems to be splitting apart. And it's not that this situation, this project, or maybe even a relationship should be abandoned. Rather, it's that you should keep still and take no outward action as the current changes unfold, because they will. This hexagram, Po, is teaching us a lesson in letting go. It may be a career path, a relationship, some project that you're working on, or some aspect of your inner journey. It may be something that you've cared for, praying it would come to fruition. And letting go of attachments, letting go of old patterns, you recognize them for what they are, and you find that some of your old patterns are not useful. And you create a new path. You create a new direction. If you look at it from the outside, the external appearances, it looks like this project, it looks like this situation, is not adhering to the time frame you had in mind for it. <laughs> Ain't that it, you know? It's like they say, you know, <clears throat> when you're making plans, you can... If you listen quietly, you hear God laughing. <laughs> this is why you must take no outward action right now. Projects and relationships have their own timing. You now have a chance. You can turn tail and you can run away from the issues facing you, in which case everything would collapse, leaving you with nothing. Or you can observe this natural process unfolding and remain inwardly still while letting go of your old ways of thinking your old attitudes, your old sense of entitlement. You got that one? Get your old sense of entitlement. Hey, man, you know I deserve that. You know, that kind of thing. You feel like you got to let go of that. These patterns just don't work. And when you move beyond those old ways, right, those old voices, you know, telling you, oh, man, you haven't done it right. It's falling apart. What an idiot you are. That's, that's not it. It's just that you're on your way to your goal. Everything is part of that movement. You know, I just spoke to my friend who's sailing, and I told him a story about when I learned how to sail. I was crewing on a 78-foot gaff rig cutter. And the captain said to me one day, he said, look, he said, in the morning when you wake up, the day of going to, going to sea, and you make your lunch, and you pack your bag, and get in your car, and you drive to the harbor, and you you know, you get on the boat, you take the cover off, you clean it, you fill it up with water and put gas and get the sails ready. And then you have your day of sailing and, or your week of sailing and you come back and you clean the boat and fill, <coughs> fill everything that you've used and, you know, make it really, with the, you know, make it really, really, uh, you are shipwright, ship, shipwright. And... Then you cover it up again, and you drive home, and you go to sleep. And he said, everything I just said is sailing. From the you wake up to the minute you go to sleep. And that's what it is in life. We're always in our project, you see. You know, when you go and you do your Tai Chi or your yoga or your prayer or your meditation, it's all part of its journey on the earth, knowing that below your feet at any minute could grow a great mountain. So now you have a choice. Like I said, you can run away from it, right? But what you can do, you know, or you become the observer and you observe this process unfolding. The right action here is to not abandon your goal. The right action is wait for the old to fall away, which it will. It's, it is rather to recognize here your prejudices, your judgments, and then let them go, simply put. Relax the mind. When you look honestly into the very heart of your present feelings, your present behavior, that's when you are likely to see what you've been influenced by. And that's doubt and fear. Those are obstacles. By keeping still, enhancing your spiritual life through meditation, and by cultivating loving kindness towards all. Let me say that again. Cultivating loving kindness for all. That's where you're going to find the freedom 
that's where you find the freedom that will allow you to fully engage on a new or refreshed level. And in this way, you'll be able to complete the work, the work that brings abundance and peace of mind, brings you what you have desired. And you know, so many ideas about religion or spirituality say, well, you should not have desires. You know, get over having desires, then you're clear. Well, I read that, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I mean, I, I do have desires, I do have goals, you know, and so I try to stay at peace without expectation, but I feel that's part of the deal. The oracle says, the mountain rests on the earth. Its foundation is broad and strong. The old is falling away, leaving you with strength and a new resolve. In everything, there's cycles, there's increase, there's decrease, there's birth, there's death, there's fullness, there's emptiness. And in your current situation, be it a, an adventure, a business venture, a relationship, your emotions, your health, or perhaps your creative and spiritual life, it's now time to fully embrace the idea that everything that has been created, no matter how strong, contains the seeds of disintegration and decay, and this is natural. Therefore, this is not the time for heroism. It's a time in action. It's not the time to be your hero and pull the sword. It's time to remain introspective and still to allow the natural process to unfold because you don't know what's gonna happen, right? The moment you know, you know what's going to happen, you're wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> That's how it is, you know? It's not working the way that you want it. It's not working the way you expected it would. If that's the case, after a period of meditation and quiet contemplation, revise your plan. If you do not recognize your patterns and change them, you're likely to fall into the abyss and start repeating. Letting go of old hand-wired patterns is truly one of the hardest things we human beings can undertake. We become attached or even addicted to a certain way of thinking a certain way of being that we've applied to situations or relationships our whole life. The greatest potential is always present in any situation, but it can only come to fruition if we are brave and we're confident that our inner guides and teachers will have our back and allow us to see and adopt new ways of thinking and being. We so often try to think that our way through obstacles and difficulties, when we build a clever plan to keep something going you know that's when this critic comes up this inner judge this ego right this dark ego comes up and say well stay with the old ways man Do, you know have that you got so many you know recognize that you got doubts you got fears and man that ego part will play on your fears and your doubts but holding on to old egotistical ineffective patterns is dangerous it keeps you from coming into balance with yourself in the simple and the natural ways. Poe, this hexagram, tells us that it's time to make a new blueprint of the situation. Once the old ways of thinking and reacting are released, then you're ready to take the fresh approach. You know, recently I met a lovely young woman in my practice whose father was dying. He was in the advanced stages of Alzheimer's and his body was given up. She and her sister were holding on to him for dear life. Her family pattern in this situation was to grasp as tightly as they could, begging him not to die no matter what. As a result, he continued to hold on until they finally, with great bravery, effort, and love, changed their ways of thinking, knowing that they had to consciously let him go. The young woman laid her head on his shoulder, told him how much she loved him, and that he could go. He then took his last three breaths. They both, with great difficulty and no judgment, let go. In that moment, they both became free. You know, it's a lesson for us, for all of us, certainly for me in these days. This is a lesson whether it involves a person or a business or your own inner state, right? It, if it is troubled and not functioning properly, then you've got to change your way of thinking, your way of being. And your words that you think are thousands of times more powerful than the words that you say. 
And it's only by doing this that you will be free on what is your true path, the one that leads to abundance and peace of mind. It is the love on the, on the road less traveled. When a fire rages through the forest, as we're seeing every day now, it destroys most everything in its path but it also releases the seeds that will only grow after everything else has been consumed and destroyed. So, it is in this act of letting go. There's a seed when you do. There's a seed that will grow after the fire within and become something wonderful, and for sure it's going to surprise you, and it's going to be so much more than you thought it might be. It's not cowardly to be in contemplation and do nothing. Be, come to center. It is an act of strength and wisdom. This week, practice being still. In that stillness, look to your old patterns, look to your old thoughts, your old behavior. Be the mountain. Feel yourself in that solidity of being the mountain. From this vantage point, you'll draw great strength. You'll trust through change, and you trust through stillness as you move into this place within and you feel your heart opening and you feel your mind connecting with your heart trust trust that through change and stillness the correct way will be revealed create a new ritual Create a new ritual of meditation, of dance and song. And even if you believe you can't meditate, you know, I hear that from people. Oh, man, I can't meditate. You know, I tried it and I just can't meditate. Well, man, just dance. Sing. That's going to bring you home. You know, and if you can't meditate, do it anyway. Change your pattern of doubting yourself. This is the way that gives way to love, you know. Just for a minute, take a deep, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Hold it in, let it out. Breathe in and say, I am breathing in. Breathe out and say, I'm breathing out. Again. All right, so all of you who can't meditate, you just meditated for a minute and a half. <laughs> That's how easy it is. Create this ritual and do it. In changing your patterns, that's where you will give way to love and to abundance. We're coming up on places to honor our own wisdom and honoring at the altar, whether it's a real altar or a virtual altar, where we honor the ancestors with our ritual and our prayer. This is a necessary component of being on our earth at this evolutionary change, the earth is changing, and it is our responsibility, each one of us, to trust and to love Gaia and to turn ourselves over to being of, of service. In every human being, there is this component that to grow requires service. You know, I meet many people who are really accomplished, you know, they're rich or they're famous or whatever it is, but they don't have service in their life, and they say, I feel so empty. And then we create service, and that's not writing a check to a charity. It's getting down, you know, hammering nails, cleaning the food, you know, taking care of people, taking looking after a family, you know, changing the earth, going out and, you know, digging your garden, being of service, right? Being of service so we serve others. That's what we're meant to do. That's part of who it is that we are as we are on this journey we call life. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. The closer that you get, you know, life and death, there's just a minute in between. Well, it's longer than a minute. But we open ourselves to that place, that place that we feel the depth of love, the depth of feeling, the openness as we move into spirit and we hear the voice of the divine in our quietude. We're 
maybe you hear a good piano, or maybe you hear a saxophone. You know, walking in the forest sometimes, you hear the music. And sometimes you hear the music, you hear a saxophone. You hear some drumming as you walk through the forest. It's natural and you're not crazy. You're tuning into the divine who's there to look after you. <clears throat> I heard a joke. <laughs> I don't share jokes. That some adventurers were hiking on this mountain and they came to this cliff and from below they heard these drums from the locals. They figured, wow. And the guy who's running it, he said to his friends, he says, oh, I don't know, mates. This is not good. And then he hears a voice from where the drummers are. And the guy says, yeah, I know. I don't have my usual drummer. <laughs> okay. Those are like the dumb jokes I tell. Listen, have a great week. Be yourself. Don't, if anybody crosses, crosses your boundaries, just stop them and say, uh-uh, that's my boundary. And then you make room for love, my friends. Have your rituals this week. As we say down here at the 20th parallel, in La Kesha Lakin, I am the other you. And as all of you have heard before, I like it that way. Yes, I do. Namaste, y'all. Namaste, you goddesses out there holding the world together. Namaste, my brothers bringing strength and beauty to the planet. Time to make love, not war. I send you so much love, all the love I can muster. And I say again, in la kesh alakim, I am the other you. And I like it that way. Yes, I do. Yeah. Namaste, y'all. Be the love that you desire. Teach the children well. Teach peace with every step. You know, listening to Tignat Han, listening to some of the wise elders that is out there. We're all coming together because it's a time of teaching. And so here we are. Be the student. Be the teacher. Be the lover. Be the dancer. Namaste, my sisters and my brothers. Namaste.